six percent humidity and uh, uh it's going to be sunny and and cloudy today in Ibadan. This is just for Ibadan. All right. All right. Moving on. It is Beyond the Surface. And today on Beyond the Surface, a, a new story jumped at me a couple of days ago. And I thought we're going to dig deeper together. Go beyond the surface of it together. Brain drain. Brain, brain, when we talk about brain drain, it's not a new thing. We've had brain drain for a long time. Brain drain um, is a phenomenon we've always discussed and look like, okay, how it affects the country, how it affects people. Why, why is brain drain such a thing? Okay, let's, let's define the word brain drain first before we go further. And brain drain is a slang term, apparently, indicating substantial emigration or migration of individuals. A brain drain can result from turmoil within a nation, the existence of favorable professional opportunities in other country, or from a desire to seek a higher standard of living. And if we felt that in time past, there was a lot of brain drain, in, this, in these days, there's a lot more. Because obviously, like it says here in this definition, it's a result from, you know, people being feeling insecure in their country, people not getting access to basic necessity in their country. So, of course, people will move. People are not free. So, when they find that they're uncomfortable, they are not content, they're not fulfilled where they are, they will move. It's not just a, an African thing. I know Americans who have moved from America as as much as people adore and worship America, I know a lot of people who have moved. All right, so let's go to the story. <clears throat> this story made news um, yesterday, about yesterday or day before yesterday or, or thereabout. And of course, the headline was what was shocking because it's like, what, what, what? I can imagine people, you know, having all sorts of thoughts. Uh, let me see. The punch records it this way. Brain drain. UK restricts recruitment of Nigerian doctors, others. Um, there's a paper called The Herald. This is how they report reported um why uk stopped recruitment of nigerian doctors nurses um a few other headlines like the cable says uk stops recruitment of nigerian uh, okay it says here in the is this is the cable uh uk stops recruitment of nigerian doctors uh and wage bill protests uh it, it, that's in the cable a few other newspapers recorded differently but obviously that headline i'm sure was shocking for a lot of people who had or had already had plans a lot of people go to school here knowing that they are not going to work a day you know here they are waiting to be recruited and it's something that's happened for such a long time all right let's read the story the i, I like the take from the herald and we're going to read the punch uh as well because their headline is a little different but the stories are, are i mean are pretty much the same here's how the herald says it um uk health employers have been prohibited from recruiting health and social care workers from nigeria and 46 other countries going forward oh i want to say a big thank you to those who are watching from facebook thank you very much for watching i would love you to comment we'd love you to contribute so if you're watching me live on facebook please contribute this is going to be open is was where we're going beyond the service together today i'm going to open phone lines uh, right after i do a breakdown of this story uh, now, UK health employers have been prohibited from recruiting health and social care workers from Nigeria and 46 other countries going forward. This was contained in the revised Code of Practice, COP, released by the UK Department of Health and Social Care. According to the UK government, the COP is aimed at all health or social care organizations or recruitment agencies undertaking international recruitment. In the revised COP, that is the Code of Practice published on February 25th. The UK government said that the Code of Practice promotes high standards of ethical practice in the international recruitment and employment of health and social care personnel. It also sets out the UK's approach to supporting health and social care systems and workforce alongside safeguards on active recruitment from countries with the most pressing universal health coverage related health and social care workforce needs, the government said. So in other words, what they're saying there is that, okay, you are taking people from the countries that actually need their health you know officials the most all right let's move on explaining the decision to suspend recruitment from the 47 nations the uk government said it is based on the principles set out in the world health organization global code of practice on the international recruitment of health personnel it refers to the who health workforce support and safeguard list of countries which must not be actively targeted by health or social care recruiters unless there's a government to government agreement in place to allow managed recruitment on the terms of the agreement all right, so it will also um, interest you to know that UK currently boasts of about 5,250 Nigerian trained doctors as of April 2018. 
you know, and that's as of April 2018, which is about what, three years ago now. All right, a rise of 10% on the previous uh, on the previous year, Africa Czech reports. In a joint statement, Helen Wortley, MP, UK's Minister of State for Care, and Wendy Morton, MP, Minister for the European Neighbourhood and the America's uh, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, highlighted the need for the revised uh, COP as concerns recruitment of international health and social workers. The minister noted that 16% of nurses and 36% of doctors in England trained outside of the United Kingdom, while the social care sector employed 35% of nurses and 16% of all social care workers from beyond the UK. The ministers expressed gratitude to the health and social care workers from abroad for their contributions to the UK's National Health Service since its inception in 1948. Yet, uh, in, in quote now, this government knows we need to do more so that our health and social care services continue to deliver world-class care. That is why we have committed to 50,000 more nurses and 50, 000, uh, 50 million more GP appointments. We are working hard to increase our homegrown supply of health and social care staff. So they want to look within, hire, more, hire their own people as opposed to recruiting from overseas. We are training more retaining more and encouraging staff who have left to return but we know that ethical international recruitment is also crucial for achieving our commitments all right i'm just going to read a little more so stay with me it says we're determined to be a force for good in the world which includes supporting better health and care beyond our shores you know this code of practice is part of the uk's contribution to international health worker mobility that offers benefits to migrants their country of origin and to the uk with the projected 18 million more health workers needed to achieve universal health coverage in low and lower middle income countries we need to work on a global basis to support healthier and more resilient populations all right it also says here and finally the covid 19 pandemic has underlined the reality that diseases know no borders it is absolutely right that we work with the countries that have the most vulnerable health systems i.e aka nigeria to protect their health and social care systems it is also right that alongside these safeguards we draw on our strengths to help develop health workforces and health systems in other countries and in doing so help the world progress towards delivering universal health coverage and meeting the sustainable development goals i mean if nigerian doctors are so great and they can be so great abroad you know why can they not be great at home i mean this is me just asking questions now the affected countries let me add that before um we move on include afghanistan angola bangladesh nigeria uh, bene Burkina Faso, Burundi, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Congo, Congo Democratic Republic, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Djibouti, Equatorial Guinea, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Gabon, Gambia, Ghana, ooh, Ghana too, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Haiti, Kiribati, Lesotho, Liberia, amongst others. All right, so well, our focus and concern today is Nigeria and how this will obviously affect uh, Nigeria. How is this a good thing? And obviously, I didn't want uh, everybody to just be saying, of course, I think the normal things everybody would be saying, eh, but if Nigeria is not providing the safe space for them, you know, why wouldn't they go? If Nigerian government are not doing what they need to, there are doctors here who don't have jobs, which is, I mean, which is fine, which is a great opinion to have. But how about people, there's um, a doctor, obviously, who uh, unfortunately couldn't uh, come on air with us today who had a different opinion. And I want to throw that in the mix so that when I open phone lines, you also consider that. Because one of the things that people have often said is the fact that going to school, at least a federal school, public school in Nigeria, federal university in Nigeria, you pay next to nothing. In, com in comparison to uh, if you go abroad to school, medical school in America or in the UK, you're going to pay through your nose. And we know people who have sold homes, who have sold property in order to send their children abroad. But then they, there, there are people who now train here, who, are, who, who train here as medical uh, students, and then right after they finish, they are recruited. Now, let's bear in mind that what this is saying is that people cannot migrate to, you know? So let's, that's how the punch says it. Um, this does not bar doctors, Nigerian doctors, from migrating to the UK or anywhere. Of course, you can still migrate. Uh, there are people who are still migrating to Canada, migrating to the UK every day. Not to say that people cannot migrate. When they get there, settling, perhaps they can get you. What they're saying is that 
uh, there should not a, a recruitment shouldn't happen unless there's a government to government agreement. So I'm going to read the comments of this lady who actually responded to me because this is something I uh, that was on uh, on WhatsApp yesterday, and so I I, I probe her a little further. Uh, because I said, you know, um, people argue that government, if government doesn't do what it ought to, these doctors will, of course, will leave. Wouldn't you leave as well if your situation is not, you know, conducive? So many doctors are unemployed. You see, doc, back in those days when we hear, ah, doctor something, you know, we look at them with so much prestige. These days, you see some doctors and you're like, wow, you know, this person went to all, all of those, you know, years of medical school and, you know, and you don't see... You don't see the prestige, all right? And and what she says is that, you know, um, in U.S., for example, you pay, like we said, an arm and a leg, 50 to 60K tuition in U.S. for education. In Nigeria is basically next to nothing. So why should they take all that investment? After investing in, in you as a medical student, then you take all of that investment and go and work in America. Then America is boasting of this robust and this fantastic healthcare system using the people that have been trained from Nigeria. And I want, I, I, not to be biased, but I want people with more opinion agreeing with that to calling. And, and I want you to share with us why you, why you also think this is a good idea. This lady was, she was applauding the WHO and saying, great, at least somebody has done this because this brain drain is a problem for us. It's a problem for us here. Our brilliant minds are leaving. I've been recruited. I've been headhunted from here to make the UK and some of these other de more developed countries, you know, you know, have the best facilities. But then the best facilities are people that they have poached from here, people that they have recruited from here. And she goes on to say, you know, there are so many ex uh, options to be explored. You know, and the government must sit down. Our government must sit down. You, you can't just let people be, you know, poaching your heads, poaching your, your best. And they are sitting down and saying, you know, if there's things you need to do and put in place so that our doctors stay here and make our health care system a great place, a great, you know, thing, then you must, you know. Um, she has also talked about um, for those who train here, who go to medical school here you there must be a contract whereby you work here for a few years before you can be recruited she talked about that you know this uh, her opinion oh, this is her opinion and she's actually a professor she's a doctor but i just like that you know somebody who was going against the flow of ah yes people must leave when things are not conducive they must leave you know i talked about the pay disparity for example i've heard of doctors who were paid um i think toby did a bit of a research for us on on how much doctors are paid around here and w what did you find to be well she didn't tell me the exact price no, i know People, i don't oh. know why is it that with nigeria we're so i don't know when it comes to pay if a person wants to see your salary no you, you, it's something that we're always so guarded about but anyway i can imagine because you know it's nigeria so what did you find to well, be? what she told me was the pay is not encouraging at all mm -hmm. before you can convince this person you talk, talk to spoke to was a doctor yes yes she works at okay. a doctor so okay. she said before you can conveniently feed as feed your family like send your children to very mm -hmm. good schools yes you would have to you would have worked for years as a medical practitioner okay so you cannot just okay i finished school and then immediately you have a very good pay you have to keep us and she also says some said you cannot just work as a medical practitioner alone mm -hmm. you, you have, have to, to have your side side, also. side hustle so it's not that easy you know so and, and so when we're talking about how uh anyway let's let's not even bring that one and some of the complaints that people have in some of these hospitals is because a lot of them are, are doctors here consultants here they have their own private practice they're working in some federal because they want to make ends meet and make everything work out together all right, so I talked about that. I raised the issue of the pay disparity. And she says, you know, uh, versus expenses and other things, racism that they have to face when they go abroad, limitations to progress, loneliness, etc. Uh, so when you convert the money, you think that it's, it's a lot. We have colleagues everywhere. We're all doing well where we are. It's just choices and everyone is free to choose. Yes, everyone is free to choose, you know, but what is the government putting in place to make sure that after you've trained people, you know, nobody wants that. After you've trained somebody, you know, then they go out and go and work. Even organizations are doing something to make sure that you have a staff. You've trained them, you send them abroad to do training, this and that. And the next year, they're reporting at your competition and working there. Even start, people are putting things and contract in place to ensure that that doesn't happen because nobody wants to invest in somebody only for them to walk up and go somewhere else. You know, so um, for the last time, I, 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 I was trying to do a research on how much people abroad praise. Somebody did a tweet one day about his friend who had, you know, left practice here as a doctor and think it was moved to Saudi Arabia. 
and the amount of money he was making compared to what he had been making when he was here <laughs> it was mind-blowing you know it was mind-blowing the disparity is like heaven like sleep and death you know so and when more doctors or young people are are hearing that and seeing that hey i can have a better life here you know of course they're going to up and move like this lady said though when they do up and move they, they are different things that they face when you're home there's nowhere like home but when you're abroad you have to face racism you face all sorts of things loneliness like she said but hey for you would you choose loneliness and and pay i have two ladies in okay so to go abroad as a doctor face racism loneliness maybe a, a little bit of limitations to progress as opposed to high pay which one would you choose you get over That's the loneliness it. i'll get over okay it. i'll get you straight all right let's take a short commercial break when we come back we're opening the phone lines to you we want to know what your thoughts are bear in mind you know the two sides i have brought up uh -huh. and then what your thoughts are on this news headlines um would love to know your views and number to call or text is um 080 or 706 949-3000 we'll be right back after this break don't go away We big at this year as a door arrange new management. Let them come back better and stronger. Then they pay commission to their agents' bank account and winnings to their customers. Shapali, Shapali, no delay. If you do football to better games, plus live bet, Jack Potter for inside 1960 bet. Visit their website on top www.1960bet.com. 1960 bet, play and win. It is time for celebration. That's the year's first thing we do. Bet huge wins from high odds all the way with the fastest payout. Take, take, take more for winning advantages from your deserving bets on all sports. Because with winners' bets, everyone can win. What about you? Visit our website on winnersbet.ng. Use promo code BETNG and get up to 200% bonus on your first deposit. Yes, 200% bonus on your first deposit. Winners' bet for every tip. Hey, is your body yo your business compliant? What does that mean, you wonder? Well, it means do you take yo yo bitters every day? Yo yo bitters protects you against opportunistic infection. This means you hyper take yo yo bitters as food supplements or as medicine by your doctor. Yo yo bitters is naturally enriched with ingredients that flushes out the body impurities, tackles waste pain, and resolves constipation. It is also fortified with vitamins that empower your body to perform at its optimum. Besides, yo yo bitters contain minerals and it boosts your body immunity that's why yo yo bitters is such a great companion to have around the home office and everywhere available in liquid gel and tablets get yours today from the nearest pharmacy or medicine store yo yo bitters www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Zenith Bank in your best interest. I want to call it the one more to Dara. Oh, Cassie, say, Maggie, one low. Cassie, say, Imoiro, the owning of Fishay. Cassie, say, Odara, Kimaimoru. 
No dear, na ho for tea they cause most tooth pain will be cavity. But if you use Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection, take brush every day. The Confirm Formula could help keep natural calcium inside our teeth. We could protect them from tooth decay. Time don't reach, so upgrade to the world's most chosen toothpaste, Colgate. Because Colgate locks calcium in... Now the Nigerian Dental Association, they recommend Colgate. If only we could show you on radio our stylish new look. Ow! Amstel Malta. But since we can't, go to the nearest store to pick up some Amstel Malta. And for Team Fit Fam, try the new Amstel Malta Ultra with no added sugar. <laughs> new look Amstel Malta. And new Amstel Malta Ultra with no added sugar. So good for you. Amstel Malta, be your best. Tu Welcome back to Beyond the Surface on Splash 105.5 FM. I'm Ronke Giwa on Nafua. And today's edition of Beyond the Surface, we are, uh, we are wading deeper, uh, wading further into this headline. Uh, the Punch records it as brain drain. UK restricts recruitment of Nigerian doctors, others. And basically what they're doing is um, they're going to stop recruitment and sort of headhunting doctors and well medical professionals uh, from Nigeria. So that Nigeria too can boast of a good healthcare system because if they keep taking our brightest minds and you know, uh, how are we going to get a better healthcare system? Our people often have to feel like they have to go to a UK, to America in order to get the best you know, health services and that should not be the case. But then there, there are so many facets and arguments to these things. So I want to know what your thoughts are. We've got somebody here. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. What's your name, please? Yeah, my name is Dr. Dobby. Do- I'm so Calling excited to have you here. Dr. Odoffi. <laughs> Dr. Odoffi. Adeshola. Yes, Thank please. you so much. What, what are your thoughts? What do you think, Dr. Odoffi? Okay, you see, the issue of brain drain is multifactorial. Mm. It's so multifactorial. Nigeria is um, a long way to, uh, to correct the issues. Now, brain drain will definitely continue. Whether to you, let me shock you. Doctors are going to neighboring African countries from Nigeria to go and work. Why? Wow. Number one, the health sector in Nigeria is rubbish. It's nothing to lie to me about. You have doctors who have the capacity, who have the resources. We have the human resources in Nigeria, definitely. You, you will not be shocked that a lot of Nigerian doctors are doing well abroad. But the major problem here is there are no facilities. There are no facilities. What I am experiencing where I am working now is terrible. You know, you have the uh, the, the the knowledge, but the equipment, mm, the facilities not are there. not there. Mm. So how do you get job satisfaction? When your counterparts are using certain things to, to detect darling, if job you have to do it manually. Is major. Mm. There are a lot of things that, you know, people should do without stress. Mm. But because we don't have the facilities, doctors 
have become engineering mm. devising mm. means trying to make things work. Well, Dr. Odofu, do you think, well, well, for, for the argument that says that, is it fair that they've trained a medical student for yes, next to nothing? One, one, they, solid, one solid point. Mm -hmm. Don't say it's nothing because some people, so there, we have a lot of people dropped out from medical school who mm. couldn't afford the fee. However, Compare with other other countries, mm. the cost of mm. training of a doctor in Nigeria yes. is relatively cheap. Yes. However, we all want a good life. We all mm. have bills. True. We all have responsibilities. How many people will not go for a, an option that will give them a better life? Mm. That will mm. give their children a better life. Now, doctors working in the private sector, mm. in the private clinics, some of them get as low as fifty thousand naira. What? Yes. Because I heard you saying you don't know about doctors. Mm. In private hospitals, some they get as low as 50,000 naira. And some that, let's say, okay, are well paid in the private sector, you're talking of about 120, 150. What is that? Mm. I have friends who have been working in government hospitals for 10 years, and their pay is not even more than, it's not up to 300. Mm. Mm. I'm giving you facts now. Mm. Mm. Now, you're talking about consultants. Consultants that have spent nothing less than maybe 15 or 20, uh, depending mm -hmm. on how many years you spend in undergraduate days. Uh, residency training, maybe six, maybe seven, maybe mm -hmm. eight, maybe mm -hmm. ten for yes. some people. Okay. Some of them that are, okay, maybe, I think I'm getting like 500, 550. Mm. For how many years? So really, the, 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 the problem is multifactorial. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, a lot of people will stay if they can get job satisfaction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If our government can invest in the health sector, yes. a lot of, a lot of uh, treatments are going abroad to mm -hmm. for, eh, my mm -hmm. darling, mm -hmm. it can easily be done here. Mm -hmm. We have the facility. I know your um, Ringo State Hospital, yes. oh, we have the facility. If only government can come in, invest in the health sector. Mm. Church of, I've been putting facilities that are required. Let doctors have um, good job satisfaction and welfare of doctors is very important. Mm. Is there a doctor that has not paid his uh, children's school fees mm. that you will expect exactly. to put in? Or a doctor that has seen nothing less, a single doctor seen nothing less than 20 patients. Mm. How do you want the best from that doctor? Absolutely. So, so the problem is multifactorial, my Absolutely. sister. And it will continue. Until our government does something. Like I said, people are going to the Gambia. People mm. are going to Cameroon. Doctors, I'm giving you facts. So it's now time our doctors wake up. Mm. It's not everybody that, that wants to travel out of mm. the country yes. for greener pastures. Some people are native men and women mm. that want to stay. Mm. But government should help them have a fulfillment. Absolutely. Do you understand? Wow. Yes. yes. Thank have you a fulfillment. so much. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dr. Duffy. Thank I really you. appreciate you calling in. You've been You're such welcome. so great. Thank you so much. Thank you for the program. All right. Great. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good, good morning. Who's speaking? Good morning, Debo. How are you this morning? Hi, I'm Ronnie. I'm fine. Thank you. All right. So, well, what are your thoughts on this, Debo? What side are you on? Well, I work for the NHS. Okay. You work for the I NHS. Fantastic. fantastic. For the NHS, I work for the Royal Free Hospital. We used, we actually recruit nurses and doctors from Nigeria, from Ghana, and mm. from Jamaica. This is that place we have to recruit for. I noticed that with Nigerians, when they come abroad, they struggle. Hmm. And the reason why they struggle is this. We are used to a theory-based system. Hmm. So when they come to the UK, for example... Hmm. Equipment yeah, that they've complete. never seen before. So I'll give you two examples. Number one, I remember we created a few doctors um, from Nigeria. Hmm. When we came, they, they took them first day of... Out of the they took them to the A&E and they basically said, okay, uh, a patient is coming in, tell me what you're going to do. A patient is coming in from this house, um, bare ambulance, the patient turns up, what are you going to do? The Nigerian guy was actually staring. His right hand span, right hand, they were able to jump on what he was supposed to do. He was obviously thinking about what the body the book say. Mm. But this one already had mannequins. They have mannequins, like that. The mannequins are very literally close to human beings that they can actually walk on. Mm. Another thing is, another reason why they show the things that we condone in the, in the health system over here, you mm. can't do that over there. Mm. I went to the hospital last week. The doctor was sleeping. He was sleeping and dead. And maybe after seeing like 50 patients, the guy. Exactly. But they do the same thing in the UK as well. They see a lot of patients mm. as well. But the system works. Hmm. Over here, and I was like, "Oh, sorry." And it was just like, "Oh, yeah, what do you want?" Like you had to say, "Like, what do you want?" Hmm. Hmm. You know, do what you have to do, and, and then leave. 
o nurses that the people are not just two years together. We, we cannot get them. Ask the teacher about the recruited nurses. Mm. And after three weeks, we have to deport them and, and, wow. and, and have to withdraw their work permit because patient is taking your temperature or taking your BP and you're on the phone. You cannot do that. Mm. If you cannot sit down the NHS, mm. you would leave. There's even no point for discipline or anything. You are going to leave because the patient is going to write a report about you. Mm. But over here, if I'm going to report to another nurse, they're going to be like, oh, sister, you know, that's how we always do mm. here. Don't be angry. Mm. The things that we get over right here. So then you see that even though you go to the, 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 the UIs of this and not go to the UCs yes, of, yes. of, this, of this Nigeria, when it goes, when gets abroad, they struggle. That's mm. why you have this in Nigeria that are consultants. You can count them out of consultants. Mm. Nigerians in the UK because they have to go through a system. They think that they get away here. Mm. They don't like cover that. They wow. do cover themselves in some situations. But over here, something happened. Everybody covered themselves, and you're literally lost as a patient. Mm. 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 So that's wow. one of the things. Somebody feels like even though you think that oh, they, uh, they, are, they have sent them over here and they're taking them abroad, but when they get abroad, they go through proper training on ethics and how things should be done, international oh, standards. I see what you mean. But you don't have a get here. Right. Oh wow. Thank so you so much. Like, I'd go. Mm. I'd be, I'd be there. Exactly. And get better. Fantastic. Fantastic angle. Thank you so much, Debo. So, I mean, the, I mean, fantastic. We've had two women on the program. In fact, well, this is a bell ringing because two women back to back on the program is rare. So, I'm glad that Dr. Duffy and Debo have called because also they have experience in the health uh, sector as well. I mean, one thing Dr. Duffy said is a consultant is getting a 500 key. When like a junior manager in some telecom is get, k- k- telecoms is also is getting around that, you know, so you can imagine. I mean, cause, to be a consultant, you're putting years. So that's, I mean, I mean, that for me was mind blowing. And Debo talking about how, so it's not just by saying, oh, they trained a medical doctor here. So why, because when they get there, they get further training. Because obviously her point is that by the time they get there, they still struggle. And so they have to have better training. There are certain facilities that they see there. They have never, Dr. Duffy said that. So they are working manually here when the world has gone, <laughs> you know, auto. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who's speaking, please? Oh, hello. I'm Kelly. This is another lady. What's your name, please? I'm Kelly. Oh, hello, Kemi. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for calling. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Listening on this topic, you know, hmm. you've just praised an issue that is actually, you know, accessible and that should be concerned to everybody, mm-hmm. whether they're in the medical field or mm. not. Uh, but I'm going to speak. I mean, I'm. I just want to try and balance it up right. in terms of the brain drain mm. and the need for the society. Right. And going to pass the bulk of all the blame mm. on the government. Mm. From the moment you start as a medical student, I'm not sure they have the best of environment suitable or conducive for their training. And by the time they finish, but the truth of the matter is, do we need them? Yes, we need them. Growing up, and especially when you are old, we mm-hmm. need them. Mm-hmm. And then when you now begin to see that the people that should be there for you at old age, they are not there. Mm-hmm. And then it is sad. And then you begin to wonder whether we have people in health sector representing the care for the people or thinking about the welfare of the mm-hmm. people. And then on the other hand, I have to think as a mother, if I have a son mm-hmm. that has gone through that pain, would I want him to stay in the heat, jumping mm-hmm. from one bed to another in an environment mm-hmm. where it's... I mean, it's so sad. Mm-hmm. And this is calling all of us to begin to take, to begin to question and bring them to accountability. Mm-hmm. We have to, I hope, let me ask you, this program that you ask us to call it, mm. to give feedback like to the Minister of Health, so that we can hear that, oh, on this particular day, the 12th or 13th day of uh, March, right. this is the issue that was raised for opinion poll, and this mm. is the view of the people that the health sector is not doing well for the doctors. Mm. Mm. The Nigerian doctors and medical people deserve mm. better care, better accommodation. Mm. You know, let me not just take on your time. This mm. issue that you are raising is so bilateral, like the other lady mm. said, that it is multi, you mm. know, factorial, yes. you know. Thank you so Thank you much. 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 Thank you so much. I really appreciate you calling in today and uh, such fantastic 
you know, points that our, our ladies, I'm so glad that, you know, they have called in to raise this morning. It is troubling. It's it's not just something that's happening in the medical uh, sector, but it's all across, you know. Uh, the last time I saw this young girl from, I think it was the ambassadors who won this maths, um, she went for this maths um, competition where she uh, competed with you know people around the world, and then she came tops. And I, I just kept looking at people like that, like hmm. in a few years now, you hear that she's a scientist in one American. She's Nigerian. They will say she's American Nigerian, mm. American Nigerian. You know. So, but like the women have said, the people have said who have called in, nobody's going to be here, be unfulfilled uh, when their government who that have the opportunity to do so much refuse to and still stay here. You know, so um, like I said, it's, it's, it's such a pity, but we must look at it and continue to have that discussion. Like she said, the Minister of Health should be involved in this kind of, you know, talk. You know, should hear what Nigerians are saying. Should hear how Nigerians, uh, how Nigerians feel about this brain drain. We don't like it either. You know, if everyone's uh, all like the best minds and hands are moving abroad, then what's left for us here? Uh, Dr. Dauphine mentioned how it's not even just America and UK that doctors are going to, they are going to Cameroon, Kuton, you know, so that's how bad it is, you know. So, uh, but let's, let's uh, open the phone lines for a, a few more people to contribute and share your thoughts. If you're just joining us, uh, let me try and do a bit of a recap. Um, this story uh, in the paper is talking about uh, UK restricting recruitment of Nigerian dogs. And that's the thing, though. It has to come to the point where they're the ones that will say, we're not recruiting you. If they're still recruiting, we'll still have people who... I mean, there's so much... If they could take everybody, I'm sure everybody would want to go. Well, obviously, maybe just a, a, a little percentage of people would choose to stay here. But the fact that they always have to shut the gate on us before we now start to think, and even when they shut the gate on us, do we think inwards? Look at what happened when the whole uh, Shasha market thing happened, and we're saying, oh, they will stop food from. Then when we're now, then we start thinking, okay, let's think of how we need to. <laughs> we need to. It's ridiculous. We need to think within before we get to the point where people are saying we don't want you anymore. The thing is, people have this theory that yes, European countries will use you as long as you are ready to be used, and then when they are done with you. They will dump you, you know. So we need to think in words on how we can empower our health professionals, not just doctors. We're talking nurses. We're talking lab technicians. We're talking pharmacists, you know. People are, it's not even just, UK is shut the door. <laughs> Canada is the new UK, you know. So our government needs to start to think. Start to think, not till they start blocking all the holes and not allowing people to come at all. Then we now start the conversation. Let's look within. How are we going to be so self-sufficient? You know, so we need, these are, these are thoughts we need to start having now. All right. It's, it's so important. All right. Let me see if I've got any uh, comments on Twitter. Any comments on Twitter? All right. If you're on Twitter, you'd like to comment real quickly before we go. We'd love to hear your views and your thoughts uh, on, on this. It's not just, you know, not just brain drain, uh, but we're talking about, you know, uh, the UK stopping the WHO actually uh, asking that the UK stop recruitment of you know health personnel in some countries, which includes Nigeria. All right, how is this going to affect us? A lot more people who you know would be abroad and and enjoying their life would have to stay here. There are people who are here who are in the medical field who can who are unemployed, and we heard of uh, I mean the paltry amount of, of money they are being paid. How, 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 what, what effect is that going to be to us when we have people here who can't go, not because they don't want to go, but cannot go and are here? What is that effect going to be on us here as well? Imagine you have doctors who, because they, are, they, are, they can't go abroad and they feel stuck here. Imagine somebody, you getting an injection from somebody who's, who's bitter that he should have been in the UK, but is here with you in a place where they are still checking, monitoring a, a baby's heartbeat with the hand and with some funnel where people... You know, so everything's so manual in this country. You want to check somebody, you look at their face, it must be malaria. You know, you look at their eyes, it must be... When there are, you know, equipments and things that do that in other developed countries, but it's not the doctor's fault. It's what they have to work with. Our doctors are superheroes because they work in the most diabolical situations. You know, when there are certain things... Like, I think one of the callers talked about that. Doctors have now become engineers. So there are equipments that should do certain things. But because they are not there, then they have to guess or figure ways out to do it. We've heard of doctors who have performed surgeries with lamps, you know, with touch lights. 
you know, all of these are things that we've heard from people, and it's it's such a it's such a sad thing, you know, but that we're still having this conversation, and especially having this conversation when we're not talking about the fact that the gate is being shut out, you know, to people. Not that oh, our people are just deciding they want to stay home, they want to look at what they are doing. They're saying that since they're not going to be taking people from outside the country, they are going to look at those who have left them and how to enc- take, th- think of how to encourage them to come back. They're going to start training and retraining their own people. What are we doing for our, our own people in order to make sure that they do not go? Because they are doing stuff for their people to make sure that they have more people that are British, you know, that are, you know, yeah, Britons who are working as doctors, they are supposed to come in to headhunt and poach. You know, it's, it's, it's a sad conversation when you look at it but it's a conversation we must continue to have because it will still develop it's just the uk now canada is the new uk but sometimes i fear that even that door you know will start to shut uh, and and there are, then our people have to confront we are here what are we going to do about it but until government steps up and start to play the role that it needs to then it's we are still going to end such discussions with a sigh and say, well, God help us, which is a sad conclusion to such a discussion at the end of the day. All right, so well, on, uh, that's all we can do today. And we thank all of those who have contributed, who have listened, who have participated. Uh, we thank you very much for being a part of the program. We hope that this will you know, re-echo and generate uh, a bigger conversation that will reach the people that it needs to reach so that they can start to um, act, they can start to perform and do their job and the role that we have you know, um, elected them to do. Thank you so much for listening. Our part is to start the discussion. Our part is to make sure, and that is what we have done, and we hope that it doesn't just end here. It goes beyond to ensure that... Um, the people we elect in office do their jobs. Well, 2023 is around the corner. If they are not, you've got to get to PVC, get your PVC and vote them out. And voting people who will perform. We hope that we will get to that point where we, we really can vote those who will perform in and we can be confident that our votes will count as well. Thank you for being a part of, of Beyond the Surface. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for um, also participating. My name is Ronke Giwa Onofua. Tifu Jada is coming up at 9 o'clock all the way until 10. Then we've got the business news at 10 o'clock as well. So thank you once again and enjoy the rest of your day. God bless. Flash FM 105.5. Que le ve, color, que le ve.